Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, President Mohamed Buhari has approved a 3.33% reduction in the federal government allocation in the current review of the revenue allocation formula. This was disclosed by the president after he received a report on the review of the vertical revenue allocation formula from members of the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission led by engineer Elias Mbam at the State House Abuja. As part of the review, an increase of 3.07% and 0.44% for the state and local government, uh, respectively, is being recommended. We have joining us to look at um, the impact of all of this, uh, Country Director, International Trading Research and Advocacy Group, INTRAP, Dr. McFarlane Edger. He joins us from Calabar. Good morning to you. Uh, thanks for joining us on this discourse. Mr. McFarlane, can you hear us? Yeah, good morning. How yeah, good morning. Uh, let's uh, start by uh, getting your reactions. Uh, a lot of people or some school of thought believes that um, this particular reduction in the federal government allocation is actually uh, well deserved or well received uh, because uh, they are pointing to the fact that um, the the bulk of um, the revenue should actually go to the you know, subsisting state. Uh, what's your thought concerning that? Mr. Aja, can you hear us? Mr. Aja, can you hear us? From what I've heard you, I, number one, uh, All right, I will try and reconnect uh, with Mr. McFarlane Edger in a bit. Uh, mercy, like I, I asked uh, uh, McFarlane there, uh, some people believe it is um, a step in the right direction because over time uh, the federal government usually get, uh, still gets in the bulk of uh, you know, the revenue as being shared by you know, RAMFAC. But they believe that uh, the state and the local government should actually be getting the lion's share as opposed to the federal government, that the federal government should actually just uh, focus on things uh, like um, defense and you know, not um, uh, getting the big share out of this whole buck. You know, uh, it, it's, it's quite unfortunate. If you look at the fact that we operate a federal system and you ask yourself what's uh, the characteristics of a federal government, you, you would also want to agree with me that state uh, resource control, uh, it's very key. It's part of the system it, at a time where you don't have, because what this, is, what this means is that we constantly, uh, the center is, I mean, you know, uh, the center is very powerful mm. and the component units are weak and which is not good for a federal system of government if that's what we're truly practicing. So um, if, if the government is saying we have more responsibility, then it comes to the argument of saying let's devolve the responsibility, you know, devolution of powers is what we have argued over time. And what we want to expect that with the constitutional review that's been uh, going on, this should also be captured. Let's not forget that the agitation that we're uh, experiencing in different parts of the country, I mean, for instance, you have certain regions saying that we have been marginalized. This region, an oil producing region, they produce um, uh, th this oil that, that the, the nation is dependent on. I mean, if you look at our economy, we're a mono economy. That means that we're highly dependent on uh, crude oil and the earnings that accrued from that. So it, 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 one would not even think that we're even trying to make progress. I mean, with this, I don't think we're trying to make progress. Now, let's look at the essence. If you look at the percentage that the, um, you know, the local government is going to be receiving, it's, it's, it's very low. It is. And what is, in elementary government, I was thought that the reason that you have the local government is that it should bring development government closer to the uh, people. To the people grassroots development and but now you want to look at the 774 local government across the entire federation of the i mean the entire federation then you will find that that development is nothing to write home about you don't you don't want to go to these places I'm, I'm not joking right you go to some of these places you will be taken aback i had an experience and you know, after I felt like it was tough because I had a production at the time in one of this community and it had to do with the environment. And then I was there. 
you, it, it, was, it was something else. There are no roads. That's number one. You don't have roads. You don't have the basic things. In the 21st century, there are no motor. I mean, there are no. When I say there are no roads, there are no roads. Mm -hmm. So I, you see people walking a distance. But I think we do have Dr. Mark Falanager back, uh, you know, on the line. Dr. Mark Falan, it's good to have you join us once again. Okay, thank you. So, um, Justin asks your thoughts on this new revenue sharing formula. The argument that's been put out is the fact that. Uh, government has a lot of responsibility. I mean, the center, that would be the federal government. And that's why this, they will be taking, uh, you know, the lion's share. What are your thoughts? Uh, it's because of the system we are practicing. At the top, we do not expect them to have that lion's share activity. The federal government, the federation we are having is a federation unit. And if we empower the various units to take responsibility, then the bulk of work is reduced from the center. And until we do that, things will not be going the way they are expected to go. The federal government is delegating responsibility. And where the bulk of work lies is at the lower unit. And so we should have resources being allocated from that angle. Now, I want, like I said earlier, I want to comment this initiative is work in progress. We will keep reviewing it. But we should have mechanisms on ground to ensure that these resources that are reviewed positively to the state and local government are actually used for what they are supposed to be used for. So federal government, meaning they have a lion's share, is because they want to. Because the truth is that the state to have more responsibility than the federal, and the local government more responsibility when it has to do with people center development. The roads in the community that are leading to the Nigerian community, it's not federal government roads that the local government that are supposed to do it. And that's where you begin to connect the food basket to the supply system. So federal government should redefine what it should focus on. And if they define it properly without bias, their responsibility is lower. All right, Dr. Edger, a school of thought seems to believe um, that uh, there is seemingly an issue with the formula still because um, governors have um, seemingly bastardized uh, section uh, 162, 6, 7, and 8 of the Constitution, you know, where it talks about uh, you know, independence of, uh, you know, uh, financial independence for the local government. Even with this particular formula, the local governments are still getting not much. Messi talked about how you know, government should be brought closer to the people, which was the essence of the local government in the first place. But with all of that, we know how it has been happening. In the, uh, they've, they've given uh, financial independence to local government. But since 2018, this issue still abound, and uh, the local government does not really get what is due them. Now, I think the system is structured to bring these hiccups and challenges for local government. The same constitution. What is the local government position in the constitution? They are merely mentioned. So let's begin to give them that true independence as a third tier of government fully recognized by the Constitution and the Federation Unit. The second part of it is that elections in local government should be taken up from the hands of the state. If you take it up from the hands of the state, then you are sure that you will have two people representing them, not people who are being handled by the various governors. That's one angle to it. The second angle to it is that of allocation. The joint allocation clause, which allows local governments and states to share from the joint allocation account is being, you know, abused and it's supposed to be that internally generated revenues in the state are shared. But we are seeing a other way that the governors get the money and give the local government what they want to give. If we go back to 1993, when we had uh, the military president, that Ibrahim Babangida, and we had local government functioning, they had the allocation directly sent to them. We saw that the local government really developed. In 1999, where this democracy started, local government had the allocation sent directly to them. 
It is when we started looking up the issue of the joint allocation account by state and local government that the governor seemed to have excess power that they begin to give paltry amount of money to the local government and they cannot develop. Okay. So you, you actually mentioned the fact that this is actually um, a good one in the sense that we're looking at timing, we're developing. Now, the last time this exercise was carried out was 1992. I mean, it's almost 30 years now. Uh, so we're going to wait for another 30 years before we have this particular review and where will the country be? Because we understand the fact that you need to and give responsibility you know, to the unit. For instance, if you look at our local government, really nothing to write home about. And the fact that uh, the autonomy for you know, local government has not been granted, governors have actually not supported that law to grant autonomy to local government. So where does this really leave us? Is this really a good one? This new revenue formula that has been shared that does not capture the interest of the local government? Now, if that, the governors are refusing to grant autonomy to uh, the local government. It shows the kind of governance we have in the system. These are people who are connected with the people at the grassroots. When it gets to election period that we're approaching, all of them will return back to the local government. It's time for us to begin to find a way. They cannot continue to hold Nigerians into particular slavery. That's number one. The second part of it, are you saying that we cannot create instruments where we are sure that these issues are addressed? What said people can take away local government elections from the state, return every election to in the independent national electoral commission? We will deny them the power of picking whoever they want to be there. Because if you contest an election, you have the mandate of the people. You have some power to speak. But if your hand is and put in there by somebody, allegiance is not to the people, but to the person. And so you find that, that in each of the states where local government elections are conducted, you find the result is almost 98% skewing towards the party of the governor. And so you have that kind of situation. It's something we need to look at. And then talking about 30 years ago that we did this review, we must not wait for 30 years time frame. We must be looking at this consistently and review it with amazing strength. I agree that we have to review uh, consistently, but uh, let's talk about the timing, really. Uh, some people have actually questioned uh, the timing of this particular change, uh, where lots of uh, reviews are being made to the Constitution. Specifically right now, uh, there are plans to uh, remove um, five items from the exclusive to the concurrent list, uh, items like uh, airports, uh, prisons, railway, electricity and fingerprint, identification and criminal records. They've been planned uh, for removal from the exclusive to the uh, uh, concurrent list. And as such, don't you think uh, uh, the timing is a little wrong? And um, this presupposes that uh, the state and local government should actually be getting more uh, as per revenue sharing. Yes, my position has always been that if I have my way for investing, I will pay 21.04% federal government, 29.794% and then let the local government get the 45%, if I have my way. Then you put a mechanism to ensure that the grassroots is developed. If it's properly developed, you will see that the rural urban migration is going to be reduced. You will have people who have integrity coming into the local government. We are talking about the constitutional reform. I am a, a bit worried that the reform is not taking in totality the cries and the feelings of the people. That some things that should be taken on the concurrency. People should be given the opportunity to invest. I don't see any reason why a state who want to get into real line investment and it must wait for the standard government. So these are part of the issues we are saying that it will come up. The timing, yes, if some people may look at it as the act of political connotation. That's because our politicians sometimes do not really have cause to present. And when it gets to election period, they begin to listen to what people have been crying about. If this report, we started it at the first year of this administration, 
we would have been seeing the impact to assess and see how far we go. In. But however, it's better than nothing. But are you sure it will still the light um, in this um, President Mohammed Buhari's um, uh, dispensation? Because from what we all know now, they are more about um, politics and politicking ahead 2023. Now, I think it will see the light in the leadership is committed. And if it doesn't see the light, then the electorate should understand that our politicians do not have us in their mind. Because for me, the difference between the political party is just the logo and the color. And until they begin to develop along ideological lines, but I want to believe that this administration will want to move this uh, reform that I have gotten forward. It doesn't take a lot of time to implement it. So, not be stopped us from seeing this allocation formula. See you from next month. So, but um, let's also look at the fact that, I mean, we come back to uh, the local governments. The, the state governors are not willing to allow the local government function the way they should. And if you look at development across the local government, there's really nothing to write them about. I, I've had an interaction with a local government uh, council chairperson, and, and they don't even have resources. I mean, because we understand that uh, some responsibilities should be on them, right? So, but the basic things that they should have, they don't have. And because they don't even have access to resources, some of these governors have become too powerful that they really dictate whatever happens. It's like if you don't give this uh, chairman the pie, they can't take it. So how does this even solve the problem of uh, bringing development closer to um, local government? And how does also this solve the problem of agitation, the fact that a lot of people feel very marginalized, especially for oil producing communities, juxtaposing that with um, some states and communities that are not producing um, you know, oil, and then they still get to get uh, the 13% derivation uh, revenue formula? Okay. Now, that's the issue. We've been able to identify the challenge that the governors of the state are becoming a core between rural development and connecting with the people. It is left for us at all levels, as Nigerian leaders, advocates, activists, to sit down and come up with a mechanism that will ensure that the governor's strong iron grip on local government should be losing. These are 36 people. They are not stronger than Nigeria. We need to call it as a matter of urgency, declare a state of emergency within the local government system. That's one. The second part of it you're saying, we regard to the process of bringing chairman into the system. We need to take away election of local government from the state. Was it was there a time that local government comes from well? The answer is yes. And I gave you the period of the 1993 period. My local government area, every local government, has one of the best mass transit in this country. It was being floated by local government. Things which were done at that time was because local government had their locations direct. And we still have governors who were in the office. You could see governors and feel the impact of governors. So if the governors are consistently lining their pockets with the money that are meant for the people, then we must not keep quiet. We must find a way to address it. And the way to address it is to ensure that there is total autonomy for the local government. Aside from autonomy and um, independence, another issue that uh, still comes to mind is that of um, accountability. Fine, we might talk um, about um, the local government and not really getting what is due them. It's not just even about um, the who gets what or how much, um, what state or what local government is getting. Shouldn't we even be pushing the, the discussion or the conversation to uh, the issue of uh, transparency, you know, what are the uh, resource managers are actually using this uh, money for? Okay, the issue of the uh, value for money and accountability, it comes across the three tier of government. It's not only local government. I keep telling them, a pot should stop calling a kettle black. If the governors are saying that a chairman of the local government 
are not transparent and accountable with the resources they are using. They themselves also are not transparent. I am not saying the local government statement are justified. But I'm saying that we will not be limiting issues of accountability and transparency with public funds to only local government areas. However, the issues we're having with local government is because the source they are getting, there is a call somewhere. And until we begin to address that, we will have this challenge. There are mechanisms to ensure for accountability and transparency. When local government functions predictably, we have the project monitoring committee. The state has oversight project team that we're getting to local government and assessing them. Even from the local government service commission, they were having oversight function. So when you keep having this oversight function, you will ensure that there is a way you can track project being used. The various houses of assembly have oversight function on local government. We have had situations where the houses of assembly have had to sustain chairman of local government for issues of impropriety with regard to utilization of force. So those mechanisms are there. But ability to use it has been compromised by the fact that even the state houses of assembly are not independent. They are tied to different strings of government. So if we have legislative autonomy and independence, we have judicial autonomy and independence, you will, be, you will have the system that will monitor these people and they will go on without any challenge. So in general, would you say that uh, this new revenue formula would actually foster peace and unity amongst, uh, you know, in the entire country? Uh, in, with, regard, with regard to resources, people will begin to see that we are getting something. But peace and unity is a big umbrella. We must deliberately seek it. Now, with regard to resource allocation, it's a little marginal improvement. And I'm saying it is work in progress. No, but the, the reason that that's, uh, you know, that question is being put out is because we understand that all of this conflict and agitation is from the fact that people are not pleased. It's the resources, how the resources have been allocated and, you know, the displeasure that comes out of it. So basically, if you say that this is good, then it means that uh, we should be getting to that point where everybody feels satisfied. Now, I'm saying that this is working progress. I said earlier that if I had my way, the resources, percentage allocated to federal government will come to the to federal government will come to the local government. We will get to that discussion. As we are moving, we are making progress. It is incremental progress. That's my excitement and happiness about it. All right, Dr. McFarland, just before there. we let you go, do you think that we should be having these as a conversation? I mean, should we be looking at the new revenue formula? I mean, should we be proposing this or rather have, you know, a proper, okay, let, let's not use the word proper. Should, should also, should we be looking at the issue of um, state controlling their resources and then sending whatever it is that they make it's a particular percentage, you know, to the obviously, center? Obviously, that's that's where we are getting to. And that is the true federation. We are talking about financial uh, compensating units, and we are talking about financial control by each of these units. So each state begins to control their resources and contribute a little to the center. Then every state will look at its viability. If we can't start it even from state, we can start it from geopolitical region and begin to see how we contribute. All right, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mafalan. But I, just before we uh, go uh, from this particular topic, let's talk about um, financial leakages that have been uh, a recurrent issue over time with um, revenue sharing and all that. How do we begin to plug all of these leakages? If we have the accounting unit, we have the auditing unit, we all know where you have leakages and how to plug it. It's about being deliberate. I think some months, some, some time ago, we had issues of staff of 10 power who were to be paid. And when those in that ministry were brought up, you and I know that the answers were being quite evasive. 
So when we have prophecies that are automated, we can block the leakages that we have. And we are sure that people will be held accountable. When people who are found to compromise the resources meant for the people are all treated equally the same before the law, we will be serving as a deterrent to others. And then there will be that accountability. There will be that ensuring to be socialization of the country. When all these are put into place, you will be blocking leakages and do calls for people to be to direct the country. All right, thank you so much. Indeed, we have been speaking with Dr. Mark Falam Aja, who joined us from Calabar, and we have been looking at the new revenue sharing formula for the government, the federal, state, and local government. Thank you once again thank for you. your time. Thank you. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and return with more. Stay with us.